Greetings everyone, I'm Chris, welcome to my YouTube channel. And today, we got a special box. It's a big heavy box, so we're gonna need to push this in the other room so we can open it up. All right, so let's see what's inside this beast. Oh wow, that's fancy. Okay, this is gonna be some task to open. I'm gonna have to bust out the time lapse. All right, so I missed the time lapse shot of opening that. Doesn't matter. It's packed in there really good. So this is a Covington six inch combination unit. It's a combination of grinding wheels, polishing wheels, and this saw over here. They're all diamond wheels, I think. Unless this is my diamond wheels. Nope, that's a polishing pad. What else is in here? Yeah. So this is like uh, for the coolant. So all these things up here are the water valves. as a recirculation pump. And we'll circulate this water and water that'll be in here and this fluid here to cool stuff down as you grind and cut and saw and everything. We got in here a little paintbrush and some bars or something. Bounce sample of tumbler powder. No, what does that say under there? Tumbler polish. And a couple of wood sticks for, I guess, spreading around or something. That probably goes with that part. What else is this thing? Two twenty grit silicone carbide dressing block. Very nice. Diamond extender fluid. There must be something I'm supposed to put on the wheels to keep the diamonds on the wheels sharp or something. Diamond paste, 50,000 mesh, five gram. Some more kind of cutting paste or something. There's extra polishing belts here. I'm not sure if there are different grits or not. It's like a 400 there, P400. With the exception of this last one, they're all the same. Whatever. So 
at some point I'm gonna have to get this downstairs find something to put it on some kind of big table and then we'll start cutting and grinding and polishing rocks all right so we got the machine down here into the basement got the work lights set up this thing has like a I guess a cleaning brush on it all right I put some water in here and that's obviously too much water so I gotta take some of that water out Okay, remove the little water. Probably not enough. I don't really say exactly how much water is supposed to be in here, so I guess it's as good as mine. Let's get the switch here. There's a switch. There's a switch. And kick it on and see what happens. Okay, so that's too much water. Let's get some more water out. All right, this thing is really finicky to level. I'm trying my best. See, that looks level right there. Why didn't that work? Stop. Let's see what I got going on here. I don't think it's that. I got water valves up here. Wait, I'm supposed to feed this thing water myself? Oh, that's just great. All right, well, since I've been dying to use this thing, we're gonna take this rock here, some kind of a sea maggot, it looks like. We're gonna cut it in half. Okay, put some of this stuff in the water. Coolerant. And I'm probably going to spray it with some extender fluid. And I retopped off the water in there, so it's probably going to get messy. smoke or just dust from the rock. So I clearly didn't have it as tight in there as I thought. That marks from the blade. But that's the slice. And then let's look at the other side that didn't come out so good. Pretty interesting for a first slice. what else we can cut. Alright, let's try this piece here. You don't yet want to go for the obvious spot. Mostly copper in that, you 
nugget there. It's got this nice little piece of, I don't know, whatever. Let me try and polish that. All right, so that is the result of my first grinding attempt. Came out pretty good. But I got some deep scratches in it that I still need to finish buffing out. All in all, I'm happy how it's coming out. I think I'm going to shape this some more because eventually I want to get to that weird nugget thing. So in my hurry to cut and grind rocks yesterday, I neglected certain things. And I hope it didn't hurt the actual drums, but I don't think it did. But anyway, so today we're going to do the actual proper setup. So what I did find was I was searching around the web and I found a guy's YouTube page. And he had one of these. And one of the things he had on his was he was talking about the drain. So I figured out that there was a, let me find it here. Okay, I just took this bag to Home Depot so I could get the right size parts. Anyway, there's this hole back here. It's kind of dark, you can't see it. It had this plug in it. So we remove this plug and we're gonna put see what we got here. We're gonna put a barb fitting in it. Half inch by three eighths inch MIP. And that's gonna be our drain. And then for this line, the way he had it set up was he had a, basically a jug of water, just gravity feeding the coolant down to these valves. So let's close them all off here. So, did some digging around. And sure enough, I have the type of hose that we need to run that. What I lacked was the fittings and stuff. So I'm going to use this coupling here as a bulkhead inside the plastic container. And then this is going to be my drain hose from the back there. And I got a needle valve somewhere in between to control the, the flow. I got a dust mask because in addition to the face shield I've been wearing, I definitely think I need a dust mask. And then I got a hose clamp for my hose. So let's start getting building this thing. Okay, so we're going to set up our drain first. So we're going to use my nylon hose barb here. Let's go ahead and open this package up. All the stuff I buy that doesn't come with the instructions, this tiny little barb fitting has an instruction booklet. Anyway. We can't quite use that as is, so we're going to have to some top Teflon tape on the threads. Uh, taped, thread it into our hole. Oops. 
and it's clearly going to be a snug fit. Much as I hate using an adjustable wrench, I'm going to use an adjustable wrench to do this. Alright, that's not all the way in, but I don't see it leaking. Really don't. Now I'm going to take my hose here. clamp which somehow turned out to be way too small we're just gonna hook this hose up as is because really who cares if it leaks a little bit this table's trashed anyway use all the hose no point in saving it so just to test it out I'm gonna try and clean some of this off by dumping some water on it water draining out. And it is not leaking at all. So it is following an interesting spiral pattern through the hose. Yeah. All right, so that works. On the next step. The next step is to put our fitting, where the hell I put my fitting, coupler. And I'm just going to drill a hole in the bottom of this two liter jug here and hang that up above. And that's going to be my cooling flow. Set that outside break out our quarter inch OD to quarter inch FIP coupling. There. Unfortunately, I should have fed this on first, but I didn't. Now we just got to run this all the way across the hose. Okay, it's easier said than done. It's crude, that ought to work. So now the really tricky part is to get this end of the coupler inside and through that hole. Okay, so after all that time, we're going to switch to a different container. Alright. Found this other container. We're going to have to modify a little bit. Alright, that almost worked, but it didn't. So, I just covered it in aquarium silicone. 
So we're going to leave that to cure. Maybe over here by the light. This big gummy job of silicone I put on here. Been curing for like 12 hours. So now we need to put some water in here. And test to see if it works. Okay, so I've got my cap. There's just water in here for now. Of course, it's not going to just spin. That would be too easy. All right. That's in our drain bucket. Let's flip this upside down and see if it leaks. No leaks. Okay. So I'm going to want a pretty short run to my needle valve, my shut off. So I'm just going to clip it right about there. That's the needle valve. Go ahead and open this up. All right. So avoid the mistakes that I make. Don't put that in first. See how this was on here? This was on top of there. So this has to go on the hose first. It will not fit over that little brass thing there. Let's set this up the right way this time. Start there and force this in. All right, I'm going to build both sides and then we'll come back. All right, so to get these these joints to where I can actually start to hook them up like you have to put this over the hose and then squeeze that in there now once you get to a certain point you kind of end up with like a ring there and you can't go much further so what I've been doing has been getting it nice and warm And then squeezing it in. And so not only does that work, but it's going to seal a lot better than had I not done that. Alright, so I'm going to finish this. Alright, and one more test before we do our final connections. Alright, nothing coming out. No leaks. Oops. All right, if you hold it to one side, it leaks a little. Okay, it just wasn't tight. Now let's open the valve. And close the valve. Perfect. Let's get our final setup going then. All right, I just dropped the coolant in the bottle. And it's kind of doing a lava lamp kind of thing here. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I've got it hooked up to the Covington now. Um, might be too much of a round of hose. 
So just kind of loop it like that so it's a little more gradual. Now let's open the top valve. Okay, I gotta do that while holding it. Okay, so that valve is open. Now we'll cut on the machine. to kind of throw it at you so let me pick out a rock to grind up a little bit maybe a green stone all right so with that little bit of polishing that's the end result I don't think you can get too good of a look at it on a GoPro camera, but Well, that's it for now. Uh, I've already cut up and ground down a bunch more rocks, so there's more of this to come. Uh, I hope to see you back for the next one, so please subscribe. It's over here in the corner somewhere, and I'll see you next time.